West Country Live with Alison Johns and David Foster. Coming next, after the ITN Early Evening News. From ITN headquarters, the Early Evening News with John Suchet. Hello. The embattled head of the prison service, Derek Lewis, went to Parkhurst today and promptly sparked a new row over the escape of three of Britain's most dangerous men. He attacked the Prison Officers Association, accusing them of refusing to cooperate with the inquiry into the breakout. But the association then accused him of distorting the truth. Mr Lewis refused to answer questions, despite even new embarrassment today over Parkhurst. Derek Lewis came to Parkhurst in the wake of further embarrassing revelations over the prison security record. He and his inquiry team must establish how seven sets of building plans came to be found outside the jail. One apparently lost by a contractor was found at a Hampshire railway station, six others during building work at a bungalow in Dorset. None were connected with the escape. There have also been claims that sensors on the security fence and on the perimeter wall were not fully operational at the time of the escape. Mr Lewis, who would not meet journalists, was highly critical of prison officers, accusing them of not cooperating fully with the inquiry. In his statement, Mr Lewis claimed that the Prison Officers Association had failed to give details of their allegations over security breaches. He added, I'm determined that this action will not obstruct the inquiry. Away from the prison, police are still following up scores of calls from islanders, any one of which might lead them to the fugitives. Senior officers still believe the men are sheltering in an empty outbuilding or holiday home. Until there are positive sightings elsewhere, the huge search goes on. Robert Hall, ITN, on the Isle of Wight. Armed police officers are now patrolling roads in Devon, emphasising just how seriously the breakout's being treated. Rifles and guns were issued after senior officers were tipped off that 45-year-old Keith Rose had threatened revenge against some of the people who helped convict him. Rose, who's been described by police as a determined and dangerous criminal, was serving a life sentence for murder and kidnap. During his time in Parkhurst, he'd written to key witnesses keeping up a frightening vendetta. Rose, who has been convicted of a particularly vicious murder here in Devon, has, for some time, some time uh, conducted a campaign uh, of threats and intimidation largely through correspondence uh, against a number of individuals concerned in those events. 44-year-old Andrew Roger was serving life after bludgeoning to death a night watchman who caught him trying to steal from vending machines at a swimming pool. The third man being hunted by police has been nicknamed Psycho, a complex character with a bizarre and potentially lethal background. Matthew Williams was sentenced to life for conspiring to cause explosions, administering poisons and arson. In a secret attic at his house, police found a variety of weapons, bomb-making equipment, a rocket, a flamethrower and an assortment of chemicals and potions. A page from a diary included the phrases, I hate people, I intend to destroy them all by whatever means I can. He planted a bomb, a real realistic nail bomb in Liverpool's busiest shopping street. He stole enough sodium cyanide from Leeds University to kill 300 people and had that in his secret attic room of his home. He even tried uh, very crudely to poison his own mother. Uh, and he also burnt down the chapel at Leeds University. He wrote about all these events in his diaries and they showed a very sinister and deep mind indeed. As the search continued tonight, people who knew Williams described him as a brilliant artist, but somewhat morbid. He was due to exhibit on the island next week. But in another almost comical twist to the story, he phoned the gallery three hours before the breakout to say he didn't think he'd be around. Next on the early evening news, a new onslaught in Grozny. Yeltsin calls his generals to account. The doctor accused of taking bribes says he didn't do it. And a slip up on the slopes for the Prince of Wales. <laughs> The Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, angrily demanded an explanation today for why his orders to stop bombing the Chechen capital, Grozny, were ignored. Mr Yeltsin ordered a halt to the air raids on Wednesday night. Despite the relentless attacks, Chechen forces are still holding the city centre. This morning, the people of Grozny learned once again what Boris Yeltsin means by a bombing halt. Artillery shells, instead of aerial bombs, rain down on the center of the city. The shells and missiles smashed into apartment blocks, 
starting fires which the helpless occupants were powerless to put out. Most of the devastation was in residential areas, making a further mockery of the Russian president's claim that he is trying to avoid civilian casualties. Six people died in one building alone, though today there did appear to be some sort of military objective behind the carnage. Russian shells are coming in from their positions just over there and striking near the main road into the city center, just a few hundred yards behind us. And it seems that the Russian objective is to try and sever that part of the city which contains the presidential palace from the rest of the Chechen forces in the south. Under the shell fire, the Chechen fighters remained astonishingly calm. Even while the bombardment continued, fresh troops arrived in the city center, prepared to face a Russian ground attack if it came. Reserves waiting in a nearby cellar chanted songs as they prepared for action. The Chechen platoons, organized by tribal clan and in only loose contact with headquarters, are nonetheless becoming an impressive fighting force. But in the next few days, they may well face a test that is beyond them. Julian Mannion, ITN, Grozny. Here, the managing director of a transport company which sent hundreds of calves on a 37-hour journey to France without food or water was today fined 12,000 pounds. Some of the calves packed into lorries for the 1,100-mile trip were just seven days old. For Geoffrey Hall, exporting live calves is big business. It accounts for most of his 30 million pound annual turnover. Around 5,000 calves are brought to his farm near York every week. While some are destined for the home market, others face journeys hundreds of miles long to the continent. The prosecution pointed to two consignments of calves which were likely to experience unnecessary suffering. Bought on the Isle of Wighton in Bristol, they were taken to Mr Hall's farm. Almost immediately, they were driven to Dover, across the Channel and into Bordeaux, a 37-hour journey without adequate food, water or rest. Trading standards who brought the prosecution were outraged. At 15 hours, he should be rested and watered. Uh, that wasn't the case, and therefore, as far as I'm concerned, they, those cars were likely to have been causing necessary suffering, and there was a breach of the legislation. My clients wish to emphasise that no evidence was presented to the court that they were cruel to or caused unnecessary suffering to any calves. And so tonight, Mr Hall, who's facing a £12,000 fine and costs, is planning an appeal. Richard Cook, ITN, North Yorkshire. An inquest into the death of Frederick West, the man accused of the Cromwell Street murders, opened today. The hearing was adjourned after one of his daughters confirmed in court that she had identified her father's body. West, who had been charged with murdering 12 people, was found hanging in his prison cell on New Year's Day. Face hidden, Frederick West's daughter, Anna Marie, is whisked into a side entrance. She had identified her father's body on Wednesday. Inside court, in a clear voice, she confirmed this. The deputy coroner, Christopher Ball, had written evidence from the pathologist on the cause of West's death before adjourning the inquest. Prison guards found West hanging in his cell at Winston Green on New Year's Day. Investigations into how it happened continue. The inquiries are progressing well. We're having a complete cooperation from the prison and I anticipate that most of my inquiries will be finished by the end of next week. Next week, Rosemary West is due before Gloucester magistrates again, a hearing her husband was due to attend. Now Frederick West's body has been released to his family, his funeral can go ahead. It's still not clear where that will be, but ironically, it could be held before the funerals of the nine Cromwell Street victims. Steve Scott, ITN, Birmingham. A leading heart surgeon today strongly denied that he had taken bribes from patients wanting to jump the queue for NHS operations. The surgeon's been suspended on full pay by health service managers in Leeds. Fraud squad officers are investigating the allegations. The allegation suggests that the heart surgeon, Mr Unikrishnan Nair, who treats patients at this Leeds hospital, has been taking bribes to allow patients waiting for operations on the NHS to jump the queue. Mr Nair, who's been working in the Leeds area for eight years, is now at home, suspended on full pay. But he denies ever having taken bribes from patients. I firmly deny all allegations made against me as they are totally untrue. I'm sure that the investigations will vindicate me when completed. West Yorkshire Police has confirmed that its fraud squad is investigating the allegation that a consultant may have received certain payments in order to influence patients' positions on the NHS waiting list.
Mr Nair's employers, Leeds Healthcare, declined to be interviewed, but issued a statement confirming that the surgeon will be away from his duties pending an inquiry into the matter. But it went on to say that suspension should be seen as a neutral act, which is normal in such circumstances. Ben McCarthy, ITN, Leeds. Labour launched a new assault on the government over bosses' pay today. It revealed that the chairman of one privatised water company received a pay rise of 571% over three years. And another row erupted after it emerged that the part-time chairman of Midlands Electricity is being paid a pension of £125,000 as well as his salary. Labour attacks on boardroom pay awards intensified today after news of a higher remuneration package for Brian Townsend, the chairman of Midlands Electricity, even though he's cutting his hours and doing the job part-time. Labour also published figures on water company chairman's pay rises since privatisation, the biggest at Northwest Water, up from 47,000 to 315,000 pounds, an increase of 571 percent, the average rise 226 percent. The government must act, say Labour. They want to force Commons votes demanding new powers to clamp down on excessive salary increases. I think everybody throughout the country sees this as a scandal because it is because of monopoly position and nothing to do with contribution to the community. There are strong powers already which shareholders can wield uh, to provide proper discipline on board pay and I hope shareholders will ask the right questions and take the right action. And while ministers may disapprove of some directors' pay awards, they're sticking to the line that it's a matter for shareholders and not the government. Hugh Pym, ITN, Westminster. A preliminary report into last month's air crash near Coventry today ruled out the theory that a wrongly set altimeter was to blame. But as yet, investigators are offering no cause for the crash in which all five people on board were killed. Today's report does little to solve the mystery of the Air Algerie plane's terminal final approach. After sifting through the crash wreckage, investigators have found no technical reason as to why the aircraft was flying low. As with two-thirds of all aviation accidents, a human mistake in the cockpit is now being blamed. Certainly at this point, I think it's really quite likely that when the final report comes out, it's going to say that this was a straightforward, old-fashioned pilot error accident of a very traditional kind. At the time of the crash, the pilot was attempting his fifth landing of a day he began at 1 a.m. He'd already gone beyond the time limit set down for British pilots. Today, they warned of more crashes if planned European laws force changes in UK air safety regulations. Nigel Mansell pledged to carry on racing today. Retirement, he asked, what's that? The only problem is he still has to find a team to drive with next season. Nigel Mansell signed his name to a poster of former racing heroes, but said he had no intention yet of joining them off the track. The former champion said he would race on despite being turned down by the Williams team. Mansell was in hometown Birmingham opening a racing car exhibition, but his eyes are firmly on the next Formula One race where he intends to be on the grid. Fire still burning and uh... You know, but I've just got to look at things realistically. You've got to look at the opportunities which are either there or not there. And if they're not there, I think it's a criminal sin to just be competing in whatever series just to make the numbers up. You've got to be there competing at the highest level. After you didn't get the Williams seat, did you contemplate retiring? What's that word? Mansell was reunited with his first ever Formula One car, though the British ace still expects to be sitting in a new one this season. Eric McInnes, ITN, Birmingham. Finally, the Prince of Wales came back down to earth with a bump today, twice. As he and the princes raced down the slopes at Closters on toboggans, Prince Charles found it hard to keep his balance. Later, bruised but unbowed, he posed for the cameras with the royal cousins. The Duchess of York and her daughters return home tomorrow. On News at 10 tonight, ITN cameras reveal the scientific treasures deep under the Antarctic. How this big fish could revolutionise our lives from organ transplant operations to ice cream making. The main news is that the prison service chief has sparked a new row by accusing the Prison Officers Association of refusing to cooperate with the inquiry into the Parkhurst breakout. The three prisoners who escaped are still on the run. And President Yeltsin has demanded an explanation after Russian troops continued bombing Grozny despite his order to stop.
That's Friday's early evening news. I'll be back with news at 10. Till then, bye-bye. Good evening. Well, we've had a fine, bright, crisp winter's day across most of the country, but things are all set to change now as cloud and rain begins to move in from the west. Take a look at back at the satellite pictures. You'll see what I mean. A lovely day across the bulk of the country. Out here to the west, though, well, watch this sequence as the cloud begins to build its way up, work its way in across northern parts of Britain. That's all set to bring rain in. So through the night tonight, well, after an early frost in parts of Scotland, you'll find thickening cloud coming in from the west, outbreaks of rain, heaviest of any rain probably up in the far west and northwest. Generally speaking, though, that cloud tumbling its way slowly but surely southwards in towards northwest England, north Wales too, and that should begin to lift the temperatures. For the most central and southeastern parts, a dry night, a clear night, and that means a frosty night too, maybe some icy patches on the odd road. So let's start in the southeast tomorrow. Fairly bright to begin the day, certainly down in the far southeast, but generally speaking from the southwest through to about East Anglia, quite a pleasant start to the day. But the further north and west you look is a very different story, thickening cloud outbreaks of rain from about, oh, north Wales, northwards. Generally speaking, at the beginning of the day, the rain will be light and rather patchy, but it will be gathering itself together as it begins to push its way steadily southwards across the country, the cloud thickening all the while across the Midlands, down towards the southeast with outbreaks of rain coming along through the afternoon. Then you'll find somewhat brighter weather beginning to nudge its way into the far northwest of Scotland with that brighter weather and scattering of showers. The temperatures tomorrow, these are certainly higher than we saw during the day today. In that cloudier band, probably around 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Generally speaking, though, quite a windy day. That's it from me. Good evening. <laughs> An inappropriate beginning, a privileged youth, and a perilous future await Catherine Cookson's Glass Virgin, tonight at 9 on West Country. Armed police in the West Country are still on the lookout for a murderer who's escaped from Parkhurst. Meanwhile, another prisoner's on the run from Dartmoor. More after the break. Get Hi! Get off! I'm starving! Oh, so much! What's for tea, Mum? There you go, Poppet. Pop it. That's all right. My mum calls me sweet bee. <laughs> what <can> I <laughs> What does your mum call you then? Come on, tell oh, us. She'll not call you. No, tell us. Mummy's special soldier. Ah, <laughs> Mummy's special soldier. Kids will do anything for a dairy lee sandwich. <laughs> Yes, but what does the sun say? Monday Sun says 21 grand must be grabbed. Get your Sun Bingo game card every Monday with the Sun. This Fiesta SI comes with a mobile phone and a year's free insurance. You could save hundreds of pounds to spend on exactly what you want. You've only until January the 31st to discover how much the Fiesta SI free insurance offer will save you. So call 0800 treble 1 treble 2 now. Jean-Paul Nicky. From your Southwest Ford dealers. What's been the highlight of my day? Discovering I've got a secret admirer. Or discovering a chocolate drink that's light in calories. has all the taste of Cadbury. So what was the highlight of my day? No contest, really. High in Cadbury's taste, light in calories. Every day should have its highlights. Charlton's brand name furniture sale guarantees lowest prices. Big furniture names. Save up to 40%. Charlton's brand name furniture sale. Lucius Street, Torquay. Take an old kitchen cupboard, a free tool like this, and take a plain white wall. A bright idea from this, and... 
Introducing the Decorated Home, a complete course in paint techniques with lots of original ideas on how to use them and step-by-step -step pictures to help. Stencils in every issue build into a unique collection, so try something different like this. Or this. Or this. It's all in the Decorated Home. A friendship forged over the years and now put to the test by youth. Boys nowadays, no pride, no self-respect. Plenty of gall, but no sand. By a woman. Who is it? Sorry you invested in me, I hereby pronounce you man wife. Where you going with my wife? And by money. I kept telling myself you were a good man. You were my friend. Sam Peckinpah's Ride the High Country, Sunday at 9.40 on 4. Charlie. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I think we're going to be here for a while. Suave. Good looking. I'm not just a pretty face, I can cook too. <laughs> and broke. Security. Well, let me put it on one of my cards. Donut cards? <laughs> and Caroline. Strong willed. I can stop shopping for as long as I want to. Sexy. Do you really want to feel like a man? And sensitive. You do that for me. No! A couple about to tie the knot around each other's necks. The upper hand tonight at 8.30. Hello again, very warm welcome from all of us here. Welcome to tonight's West Country Live, an important day for the superstitious amongst you. 6th of January. Yes, it's 12th night, so the Christmas decorations have gone for another year. We start with tonight's headlines. A prisoner is on the run from Dartmoor Jail as armed police hunt for the murderer Keith Rose. Brittany Ferries defends its record as safety at sea comes under scrutiny. And off with the baubles and into the bulldozer, the Christmas trees destined for the dunes. Also, should you be cutting back on the calories after the excesses of Christmas? Some people say this is the year they're going to shed not just pounds, but stones. Others want to drive their bodies to perfection. That's on tonight's Insight. Well, in tonight's sport, we'll have the latest dramatic developments on Peter Shilton's battle to get his job back at Home Park. And we'll look ahead to a busy weekend on the field. Plymouth Argyle are aiming to cut Forrest down to size in the cup, but Stan the Man could give any hopes of giant killing the chop. All of that and much more coming your way in the next hour. Let's begin with tonight's main news stories. <laughs> The hunt's on tonight for two prisoners on the run. Armed police in the West Country have joined the search for convicted murderer Keith Rose. He escaped from Parkhurst Prison three days ago. And this afternoon, an inmate absconded from a Dartmoor prison working party. Chris Gurney has the latest from Dartmoor. <laughs> 